counselors are done playing with their toys. Alright, for the uh, TV staff there, we're going to go in here in five, four, three. The KBC Council regular meeting for December 3rd, 2014. If you will please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance in a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Can you please stay standing for a moment of silence for our men and women in the service of our country. Thank you. All right, so the next item on our agenda is the Canby Community Food and Toy Drive Proclamations, which is sponsored by the Canby Kiwanis Group. So whereas the Canby Community Food and Toy Drive, sponsored by Canby Kiwanis, originated for the purpose of providing toys and food for less fortunate families in our community, and whereas by way of this proclamation, the city of Canby recognizes that greater public awareness and involvement is needed in order for such programs to achieve their highest potential in providing and promoting joy to each household in this community. And whereas Canby community members have undertaken the project of collecting and distributing toys and food to these needy families during the month of December. And whereas donations of food baskets can be left at various locations around Canby, now, therefore, I, Brian Hodson, by virtue of the authority vested in me as mayor of the city of Canby, do hereby proclaim December 14th through December 20th as Canby Community Food and Toy Drive Week, sponsored by Canby Kiwanis, and urge all people of the city of Canby to observe this time by participating in this toy and food drive, helping to provide assurance that each family may have a twinkle in their eye this holiday season, given under my hand this third day of December 2014. <coughs> And I believe Doris Robertson is here. How are you? Good. Thank you very much. Uh, we thank you for the proclamation. Yes, we'd like to sit and tell everyone what's going on and what, what they can, where they can give. Um, I didn't come prepared with the schedule. However, if you want to show up and work on Saturday morning, we are working from 9 till noon. And then we have other times scheduled. You can check the uh, Kiwanis website, Cami Kiwanis website, and you can find out our work schedule. Um, we want to thank the city for this proclamation. We couldn't do it without the, all the service clubs of Camby and the city council and all the people behind us here. And we want you to know everything stays local. It's for Canby, and everything is uh, works through the schools, and it's very well managed by our chair, Sharon Schneider. And we're very happy to be part of this uh, great service to our community. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you guys. very much. And do we, you have somebody to help collect items here, or? Okay. <laughs> I left my bag on the floor. You're welcome to just take the bag too. Thanks, Joe. Yeah, yeah. Let's do this. I, ha I, I have a tip. I keep them all. Recycle, reuse. Yeah. Thanks, Joe. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Doris. Appreciate it. The uh, next proclamation is. Uh, the measure 3-453 election results, whereas the city of Canby, County of Clackamas, Oregon, placed a measure on the general election ballot on November 4th, 2014, to consider the following measure. Measure number 3-453 shall uh, 4.62 acres located along North Pine Street be annexed into Canby, whereas the Clackamas County Elections Department offers the following as an official count of votes for the general election on November 4th, 2014. Yes, 4,373. No, 1,657. Now, therefore, I, Brian Hodson, Mayor of the City of Canby, Oregon, do hereby proclaim the f foregoing to be a true and accurate accounting as presented by the Clackamas County Election Division dated November 24th, 2014, dated this third day of December, 2014. 
Kim will just hang on to these and yes. add them to my pile of signatures for later. <laughs> the next one is uh, measure 3-454 election <coughs> results, whereas the city of Canby County of Clackamas, Oregon, placed a measure on the general election ballot on November 4th, 2014 to consider the following measure. Measure number 3-454 shall 32.1 acres located north of Southeast 13th Avenue and east of South Teakwood Street be annexed into Canby. Whereas the Clackamas County Elections Department offers the following as an official count of votes for the general election on November 4th, 2014. Yes, 3,918. No, 2,057. Now, therefore, I, Brian Hodson, Mayor of the City of Canby, Oregon, do hereby proclaim the foregoing to be a true and accurate accounting as presented by the Clackamas County Election Division dated November 24th, 2014, dated this third day of December, 2014. And final uh, proclamation today is the, the results of the mayor and council election, whereas the city of Canby, Canby County of Clackamas, Oregon, held a general election on November 4th, 2014, and whereas the Clackamas County Elections Department offers the following abstract as an official count of votes as of November 24th, 2014. For, this, uh, for mayor, uh, Brian D. Hodson, 4,088. Write-in votes, 244. City Council, Clinton H. Coleman, 2,716. Todd H. Rocha, 3,132. Tracy Height, 3,646. Greg Parker, 3,008. Uncertified, 84. Whereas the three people receiving the most votes for City Council will be selected to four-year terms on the Canby City Council. Now, therefore, I, Brian Hodson, Mayor of the City of Canby, Oregon, do hereby proclaim the foregoing to be a true and accurate accounting as presented by the Clackamas County Elections Division, dated November 24th, 2014, dated this third day of December, 2014. Great, thank you. Communications. I have nothing to share with you this morning. Let's see. First opportunity for citizen input and announcements. Uh, generally, there's yellow cards there back by the door. If you are so inclined to speak to us, tell us your deepest and darkest secrets would be great. <laughs> Seeing none, we will move into mayor's business. Uh, first off, a happy belated Thanksgiving and in advance, Merry Christmas. Um, hope everyone had a great Thanksgiving. I think everybody that I've talked to did, so that's great. Um, just running my list here, uh, had some conversation uh, with the city manager about, uh, and I'll bring this up with you, Councilor Coleman, since you're the liaison to the Traffic Safety Committee. Um, maybe just another you know, topic of conversation has been 10th and Ivy and and Holly, or 10th and Holly. Uh, there was another uh, accident, unfortunately, I think this weekend, and I know that that's an area that we've been, that that committee's been looking at. Um, so I, I know that there's a meeting this Friday, so I'm sure you have, we'll have updates, or there will be an update after that. Um, but I know that that's something we've been working on, and it sounds like it's uh, continuing to be a, a hot um, hot topic in an unfortunate area. So um, the RFP went out for the architect um, for the new Civic Building, uh, and that'll be cl the closing date on that is a quick one, so it's going to be done by um, December 29th. So we want it in and, uh, and we got it out there and so we'll be getting that back here at the end of the month and Rick will, our city manager will go over the additional timeline pieces here in a little bit. Uh, if you haven't noticed, First Avenue has lights. So thank you to uh, Rick and city staff and Public Works for getting First Avenue um, twinkling for the holidays. So thank you, it looks fantastic. Um, so with that, we have uh, light up the night this Friday. So for first Friday, we'll be lighting up Wake Park and the Christmas tree. Um, so come on down, shop, have dinner, hang out. Uh, and also bring some canned foods because the Cub Scouts and Boy Scouts will be collecting canned foods along the parade route. So uh, please uh, do help out with the uh, Kiwanis Food Drive and everything else that we've got going on here in Canby. Uh, this past Saturday was Small Business Saturday. Uh, hopefully everybody got out and did a little shopping locally. Uh, I went out and uh, I had coffee at place to be and they were packed and they were very busy. Uh, and so it looked like there was some good activity and good uh, good things going on here in, 
in Camby on Saturday. Um, had a uh, meeting uh, myself, uh, city manager, and Councilor Coleman with um, Roger Reif, the library um, chair and library board chair, just to give uh, an update and have some conversation about the civic project and um, the library pieces on that. And so I think it was a good conversation and, um, and I think ongoing. So uh, some good things that are occurring there. A uh, couple of thank yous to uh, Mike at Pappy's Greasy Spoon. Every year he holds a, a free Thanksgiving dinner. Well, we'll say complimentary with canned foods that are brought in. And he had, uh, I know he had a lot of uh, people on turkey duty um, helping him out. But it was, uh, it's again, it's a great, uh, great give back to the community. And, and uh, he was, once again, uh, overwhelmed with support, but also people coming in and, and having, uh, having dinner and celebrating their Thanksgiving with him and his crew there. So thank you to... Uh, Mike and, and uh, his restaurant. And finally, as we saw tonight, just a thank you to Kiwanis, Canby Center, Canby Rotary, uh, and the churches in our community for the support this time of year. It's a big need. There's still lots of need out there. And so if you can support them in any way that you can, there are barrels at various businesses around town. Um, you know, please feel free to give and give often. I know that uh, new trend that started um, Tuesday was... Uh, um, Giving Tuesday, I think, is mm -hmm. was what. So we have Black Friday, Cyber Monday, and Giving Tuesday. Uh, and I know the Canby Center did a dinner, dinner, and 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 whatnot on Tuesday. So it was uh, that was packed, from what I heard uh, as well. So um, again, just keep that in mind this time of year. Uh, and so that concludes my business um, for now. And then we'll start. Councilor Rocha. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, on the Camby Adult Center front, they'll be having their Holiday Bazaar this Saturday the 6th. I don't have a time, so I need to I check online for that. Uh, the Christmas luncheon will be on December 19th, and Santa will be there on Monday the 22nd. Uh, I will be attending the Friday night uh, Light Up a Night Festival at Way Park, as well as volunteering this Saturday at Baker Prairie for Operation Snuggle. And that is my report. Nothing on parks or anything like that? They did have a meeting last month. Great. Thank you, sir. Councilor Hensley. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I likewise spent a good day, a good portion of my Saturday shopping locally. I think I've got almost all my Christmas shopping done. <laughs> almost. And uh, just to reiterate about the light up the night that the mayor mentioned, the paper um, talks about the event park when it's time to be done with the parade. I will also apparently following you around this weekend because I'm going to the park and I'm also <laughs> going to Operation Snuggle on Saturday morning and C4 with you tomorrow. So I we'll have a more robust report in January. Excellent. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Councilor Coleman. Mr. Mayor, um, on the library front, uh, we have a board meeting this next Tuesday, December the 9th, and I'd like to thank our city manager Rick and the mayor and uh, Roger Reif, uh, the library chair, for getting together to discuss a variety of uh, issues related in the new library. Appreciate that very much. And also on the library front, I just want to encourage everyone to pick up a uh, Canby Herald newspaper. Um, the library is doing a really unique fundraiser this year. It's uh, Homes for the Holidays. It's five Canby homes will be open for viewing this Saturday as part of the first Christmas tour of homes. And in this uh, Candy Herald article, it gives you the address of each home, um, and they're all real close. They're uh, Territorial Road and Country Club Road, um, Northeast 29th Place. And in this article, it tells you that the um, tour of homes is from 11 to 3 this, this Saturday. There's five fully decked out holiday-themed homes which will be open for this event. Uh, tickets are $15 for adults, $10 for children under 12 years of age, and they can be purchased at Cuts Force Thriftway, Canby Massage Therapy, Canby Public Library, Bernie's Bistro, especially for you, Wallflowers Framing Gallery, Willamette Valley Country Club, and you can also purchase tickets at the homes uh, that are being shown. So that's a great fundraising event and a encourage everyone to participate in that. I'd just also like to thank everyone that volunteers and supports the library, the library board, the friends of the library, 
just a bunch of dedicated folks that really do a good job and our community is very fortunate to have on the traffic safety front um, this Friday we have our meeting on uh, December 5th 830 to 10 and we've invited uh, Red Flex to come to this Friday's meeting they uh, came and gave a presentation about a year ago and so we uh, want to bring them back and grill them with some more good questions and uh, also wanted to just thank the traffic safety group uh, just a dedicated bunch of great folks um, unfortunately one of our board members uh, Leonard Walker who's just been a terrific member uh, he's having to resign his position due to family health reasons so I want to give a big thank you to him and finally I just like to reflect on my experience as a city councilor um, this has been a great experience for me I've gotten to know a lot of city staff uh, work with a number of departments uh, mostly police <laughs> Related, oh, really? <laughs> related to traffic oh, safety. Oh, throw that caveat in there, Councilor. But okay. I just like to say how <laughs> I'm impressed I am with how friendly, professional everyone has been, and what a great job that they do. Uh, we're so fortunate to have such outstanding leaders in all our departments: police, fire, city, library, finance, planning, um, public works. I mean, I can't. Just all of them. They're just top, top notch. And the mayor and the councilors, you guys are pretty good too. <laughs> <laughs> but um, this has been a this is a fantastic community we live in, and I'm just thankful to be a part of it. And uh, I'm, I'm proud of what we've done in the last couple of years, and I'm excited about where we're going. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very nice. Thank you, <laughs> Council President Jeff. Mr. Mayor, uh, Camp Utility did not have a meeting since our last council meeting, so no report there. And I will defer to our city administrator, Rick, to bring us up to date on the architect. And I will see everyone at Light Up the Night, Friday night. Yeah, okay. great. Thank you, sir. Councilor Parker. Well, I too will be at uh, Light Up the Night. I look forward to s seeing the rest of the council. Maybe we need to send a notice that we'll have a, have a quorum there. Uh, Bike and Pedestrian Committee uh, did not meet last month. They're picking up uh, a meeting next uh, Tuesday at uh, 6.30 at the uh, development uh, building, and uh, I'll be there. Great. Thank you, sir. Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. Uh, November 20th, uh, we had our CAT board meeting in CAT. Uh, revealed that they had applied for two bus replacements from the Federal uh, Transit uh, Association or uh, Department uh, Bus and Bus Facilities Discretionary Grant Program in July and they were notified of the acceptance. They awarded this uh, application and the grant uh, will be made uh, uh, hopefully by June and they were made aware that uh, in, in November that they uh, were awarded. And this is going to replace uh, two diesel low floor cutaway 19 passenger buses with two wheelchair stations, uh, similar to the uh, Arbok buses in the fleet that we have now that they'll be retiring two of those or selling them uh, to replace. The total project cost estimate is 294,000, so it's 147,000 per bus. The grant will cover 83% of the cost, which is 244,020, and CAT will be responsible for the additional 49,980, which is 70% of the cost. And CAT has funds from surplus buses and an insurance settlement for a bus that burned earlier this year and uh, so for total matching fund of 54,250 and then away uh, as uh, advertisement for their Christmas program the staff at CAT would like to invite folks to their Christmas holiday open house on Monday December 15th and those who ride the bus will enjoy a holiday light tour as they travel to and from the event Rides are one dollar uh, each way. If you want a ride, want to ride the bus, be sure to call 503-266-4022 uh, and make a ride reservation by 5 p.m. on December 12th. Or come to the event in your own car. 
CAD is located at 195 South Hazel Dell Way, uh, Suite C near Wilco, just across from Fred Myers. The open house will be from 5 to 8 p.m. with the door prize drawing happening after all the bus riders have arrived. There will be snacks and chocolate and hot chocolate for that night and lots of fun. Also, Cat uh, can provide rise to the Christmas tree lighting uh, at Waite Park on Friday. If folks will call for a ride reservation by 5 p.m. tomorrow, December 4th. And this also be one dollar each way. And then we had our November 24th Planning Commission meeting and uh, Mr. Ed Netter requested a minor land partition of existing lots located at 672 First Street into three lots and it was approved by the Commission 5-0. And uh, under new business, Jason Bristol requested a modification to replace the pavers with asphalt for his previous approved Emerald Garden subdivision, mm -hmm. approved by the commission, subject to meeting the code requirements. Uh, Brian Brown uh, then introduced our new associate in the planning department, Dave Epling. And uh, some good news uh, that I think a lot of people have been waiting for here in Canby. Uh, the appeal by, uh, I think it's downtown, Can save downtown Canby, uh, made several appeals to Luba uh, to stop uh, Fred Meyer's uh, service station coming in, but uh, Luba uh, overrode that and uh, gave the award to Fred Meyer. So we'll be having a new gas station in town. And that's my report. Great. Thank you, sir. Uh, I want to throw out before we move into the consent agenda. Uh, had the great opportunity to go to the chamber luncheon on Tuesday. I got to plug this, and had the opportunity to hear the the Cantalinas sing during lunch, and they were phenomenal. Uh, I was they've been impressed every year, but they were it was great. They were they did an amazing job, and they have their concerts coming up on December 10th and the 15th. And Mallory, what time are those? Seven o'clock. Shoot, I knew the tenth and the fifteenth number. I don't know the uh, clock time. Councilor Hensley says seven o'clock. So I'm going to go with what, and she's usually right. So uh, we'll say seven o'clock on those evenings. And so if you get an opportunity to go, go. It's a great, uh, great event and a great way to get into the uh, Christmas spirit. So I had to plug that in and get that in there. So with that, we will move into the consent agenda. Mr. Mayor, I move to adopt the minutes of the November 19th, 2014 City Council work session and regular meeting and the reappointment of Tyler Smith to the Planning Commission for a term to expire on December 31st, 2017. Thank you, sir. Second that. Motion made by uh, Council President Dale and seconded by Councilor Coleman to adopt the minutes of the November 19th, 2014 City Council work session and regular meeting and reappointment of Tyler Smith to the Planning Commission for a term to expire on December 31st, 2017. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Great. 6-0. Thank you all. Uh, resolutions and ordinances. Okay, first item we have is resolution 1204. This is codifying and compiling certain existing general ordinances for the city of Canby. And this is just a housekeeping uh, resolution that we do yearly to codify the ordinances that have been adopted over the past year that affect the municipal code. Great. Questions, comments? Everyone's okay with all that we did in the past year? Mr. Mayor, I move we adopt resolution number 1204 and a resolution codifying and compiling certain existing general ordinances for the city of Canby. And I'll second that. Motion made by Councilor Hensley, second by Councilor Parker to approve resolution 1204, codifying and compiling certain existing general ordinances for the city of Canby. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Great. The next item we have is Resolution 1205. This is authorizing the City Administrator to execute a donation and vacation agreement with Plan Tour LLC, and our City Administrator will pres present this. Yes, uh, thank you. It uh, gives me some degree of pleasure to bring this to you this evening. I know 
that uh, staff of both agencies, the private sector and, uh, and our staff, have been working hard on this project for a considerable period of time. I first need to note that uh, as uh, this resolution was read, Plantor LLC is actually the real estate holding company for SR Smith. So in my conversation with you and presentation to you tonight, I will be referring to SR Smith. Uh, and please know that they are one and the same for our purposes. Uh, I'd first like to start by acknowledging uh, Mike Dodona and Joseph Schaefer, both of whom are in the audience this evening. And uh, thank Mike, Joseph, and John, Don Jeske, who uh, is out of town today for the work that they've done. And also uh, acknowledge and thank our city attorney, Joe Lindsay, for the work that he's done in putting this together. Uh, both the uh, city and SR Smith have encroached on one another's <coughs> property uh, and this agreement that you have before you today would put into motion steps necessary to correct that. Additionally, uh, SR Smith has in, uh, in looking at ways to address the city's encroach, uh, encroachment on uh, property adjacent to the park offered to donate a uh, tract or a section of land roughly a third of an acre to the city. And uh, as you look at the two maps that I provided to you, the one that, that uh, shows a parking lot in the corner is the area that represents the, um, the land proposed to be donated and is roughly 15,800 square feet, which is about a third of an acre, uh, approximately 40% of which already has a uh, parking area for the Canby Park. So uh, so we're actually making pretty good use of it already. Um, the, I have provided to you also a, a map, and again, my appreciation to S.R. Smith and their staff for, for generating this map. Uh, a map of the areas to be vacated, and you'll see highlighted both in green and red the areas that would be affected. And these are areas that are on the uh, Southwest Burke Parkway. Um, and this is the the time that I would say that uh, not only did, did we put a parking lot on their property, but they put a corner of a building on ours. And so the, the benefit uh, of this uh, proposal that you have before you, which I heartily recommend, uh, accrues to, to both the private sector and the public agency. Um, the agreement as it is written does not finally bind either party to, to an ultimate outcome of the vacation and donation. However, it puts in place the, the language and the process necessary to achieve the steps uh, to accomplish what we want to accomplish, and that is the, to facilitate the donation of the property, the redefinition of the uh, of the properties to either SR Smith and, or to the city, and uh, and ultimately uh, maps, new maps that will be recorded that will reflect the the adjusted property lines for both parties. Um, SR Smith has uh, agreed as a part of this agreement. To, uh, to pay all of the costs associated with, um, with the work that has to be done. There is an exception to that, and I need to note that um, just so that, that uh, um, there's no ambiguity here. Uh, I will be asking our own engineers to review the, uh, uh, the wet stamped um, maps uh, just to clarify, uh, do, do the city's own due diligence uh, to clarify uh, and come to ultimate agreement on on the uh, layout as it will finally be recorded. So there is a nominal cost that the city will incur, but I feel it's really important that we have an arm's length relationship at, when it comes to doing the final inspection. So so there will be a nominal cost that the city will, will incur in doing that. Um, I don't think it's a step that we should ignore, however. Um, the, uh, the agreement has gone together really well. Um, 
SR Smith and its legal counsel drafted the initial draft. Uh, your city attorney and I made a number of changes to it, and SR Smith virtually unilaterally agreed to the changes that we had proposed. So we're uh, very happy with, with the outcome of, of the discussions and the negotiation that went on and with the outcome of those negotiations and with the place that we find ourselves in today. Great. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Any questions or comments at all? No? All right. Great. Thank you. Appreciate it. Motion, please. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion that we adopt Resolution 1205, authorizing the city administrator to execute a donation and vacation agreement with Plantor LLC. Thank you, sir. Second, please. Second. Motion made by Council Ryder and seconded by uh, Council President Dale to approve Resolution 1205, authorizing the city administrator to execute a donation and vacation agreement with Plantor LLC. Any other discussion at all? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Passes 6 0. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, John. You. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for coming in. Can I just say one thing really quick? Yeah. And I'm, I, I don't know if any of you, uh, uh, I'm Mike Dito, I'm the CFO at SR Smith. I just want to thank Rick and the city attorney and everybody for their work to uh, keep this moving forward. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks, Mike. Okay, the next item we have is Resolution 1206. This is adopting a supplemental budget for the 2014-2015 fiscal year, and Haley Fish, our finance director, is here to present it. So I'll go through a few of the changes that we have in front of you. Um, a lot, the biggest ones that I wanted to make sure that we went over have to do with a change in some projects in the street fund, but we'll start with um, the general fund as it goes in order. Um, we have had about $57,000 in uh, retirement and separation payouts in the current year. That um, We set up a separation and retirement reserve last year to fund these so that they didn't um, become hits on departments um, short, uh, short notice. And it was funded through some savings in health care across all departments. Um, this and some payouts that were done last year do exhaust that reserve, but I want to maintain that reserve and continue to look for ways to fund it as resources become available in the future, as there is still a future liability for these uh, retirement payouts going forward. Um, There's also some adjustments in personal services in the parks, parks department for um, a difference in uh, allocation of staff and elected benefits. Um, there was a, some unforeseen equipment uh, repairs in the parks department as well as materials and services. Um, about 28,000 and there's, this is actually allocating the, uh, budgeting the 25,000 that was approved by council for the property held for sale. Um, those initiatives are already underway so this just um, makes sure we have enough funding to support that and some other very minimal changes in the general fund um, going to the street fund um, the urban forestry revenue program is new this year um, <coughs> relating to street trees that's a, a revenue and um, offsetting expense that have been recognized for the actual revenue um, that we've received to date and then the biggest changes which aren't apparent on the face of the resolution but have been described in the staff memo is that when we went through the budgeting process um, we had had determined um, a set of projects including Juniper Street and um, another project that have been deferred in favor of doing the fourth avenue improvement project which um, is a safe road to school over by the high school that has um, been determined to be a priority um, as recommended by the Traffic Safety Commission. <gasps> Got it right. Um, <laughs> um, and with that project, we have actually gotten additional funding um, from the state uh, federal fund exchange. So we are leveraging our money um, the best we can, which is awesome. 
Um, also included in your packet is a street maintenance fee activity summarized since the inception of the program in 2009. Um, this shows that we've been tracking those restricted funds, the revenues, and then how they have been used. The department has um, also been able to leverage these funds by um, using them for their allowable purpose and ma getting matching funds from other sources like the county and the feds to do bigger projects. And there's been a lot um, of good successes and stuff getting done through that project. Um, and it was suggested through the work session earlier that we potentially do uh, um, a presentation to kind of outline some of the successes of that program. But the feedback we have gotten is that people are starting to see the improvements as they've been done over the last couple of years as the program has been very active. Um, but the people managing it have been very um, strict about making sure that they're using it for only allowable purposes, which I know was a concern when the program was started. So um, we and we've been uh, added that to a budget line to show that and make that more transparent. Um, next in th is the fleet fund and we um, are allocating some capital which just has to do with some timing of some um, of a vehicle that was expected to come through last year and didn't occur until this year so it's just a timing difference. Um, in transit the budget um, increase um, is for the bus yard project which was approved earlier this year and we knew that we would have to increase the budget to fund that and they have the reserves available to do that. The sewer reserve, the biggest increase is the wastewater treatment improvement, which you're, you have before you um, the bid uh, for second reading today, and that bid came in above expected, um, but then there was also some uh, timing differences of engineering costs, which we had budgeted for last year that didn't occur till this year. So um, those are the changes going on there. And then the SDC fund, which is new this year, um, those balances are being adjusted to actual based on the year end results of last year and the amounts uh, that were remaining to be transferred into that fund. So that is an outline of what is included in this supplemental budget for you. Does anyone have any questions? More of just a comment for those here and at home that we had a work session prior to the meeting to hear uh, all of the same information and whatnot and, and dig a little bit deeper into kind of where we're trending and whatnot and all in all things look good so far we're trending in you know in a good direction so i'm seeing haley nodding affirmatively yes. that's, that's good I'll make sure we're not speaking out uh but so trends are going in the right direction i think yeah. was the term i decided on yeah so mr parker and and mr mayor having gone through this now for four years i just want to say that haley is uh, making our finances um, more precise and uh, intentional. So uh, in terms of, of good government and transparency, um, I think we're making progress there in terms of the day-to-day -day operations, how our financial information is presented. Uh, I think it's, it's easier to understand and uh, also uh, our budget projections. Uh, budget to actual is uh, trending closer now than I can remember so yeah. I think um, not only does the economy seem to be better but the city seems to be running better so perfect thank you sir um, everything he said but also I wanted to thank Haley for your commitment to establishing and maintaining reserve funds for those things that the general head fund has been taking heads for for example the the fun to pay out the retirements and such so your commitment to have the foresight and those kinds of things is much appreciated can i make one more note yes also included in your packet is um the system development charge annual report which is required by the state and is now complete for last fiscal year and on file at um, the finance office if anyone would like to see it and that outlines the sdc revenue that came in and what um sdc revenue was used for in the, uh, which projects they were used for last year. And I would, would, would like to ask, add one comment. Everything that all of you said, <laughs> plus, plus. Uh, I really appreciate the plain English 
language that Haley uses in presenting the information to you and to the public so that there's a clear understanding and no ambiguity relative to the uh, city's financial position. Right. Yeah, it's helpful when we go in there and Haley is gracious to, you know, answer not only our questions, but I'm sure many other people's questions as well and, and able to break it down that way. So yes, definitely a, a much easier process for us. And so thank you. Okay. We'll take a motion to approve our supplemental budget here. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that we approve resolution number 1206, resolution adopting a supplemental budget for the 2014-2015 fiscal year. Second. Motion made by Councilor Coleman, seconded by Councilor Hensley to approve resolution 1206, adopting a supplemental budget for the 2014-2015 fiscal year. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Carry 6-0. Okay, the next item we have is Ordinance 1405. This is proclaiming annexation of 4.62 acres, including 4.47 acres of real property, described as tax lot 2600 of tax map 3-1E-27C and 0.15 acres adjacent to North Pine Street right-of-way and amending the zoning from Rural Residential Farm Forest RRFF5 to Low Density Residential R1 and setting the boundaries of the property to be included within the city limits. And our planning director, Brian Brown, is here to present this. Thank you, Kim. <laughs> uh, we've chosen to adopt an ordinance to achieve three things. The code requires you to either pass an ordinance or a resolution that basically proclaims, you know, the annexation and uh, bring, this, bring the properties into the city. Uh, we're also setting the legal description of that area by passing this ordinance. And thirdly, we're officially changing the zoning map of the city with this ordinance. Uh, we did discover that uh, historically we have been passing resolutions and at the su suggestion of our uh, previous associate planner, Angie Leonard, she said, you know, technically our land development code says you must pass an ordinance for mm -hmm. establishing a change in our zoning maps. And we had not actually been doing that in the past with annexations. Of course, other zonings we always have. So we decided that we'd combine those into an ordinance rather than a resolution and we'd achieve all three of these goals at the same time. So uh, unfortunately, Angie left me the job to do that. And so there's a <laughs> lot of whereas is in here and I'm not gonna go through all of those, but that's what uh, this ordinance and the next one are achieving for the properties that you've already stated what we've done. Mm -hmm. and this particular property was the Ray France and Connie Vicker property up on North Pine. Right. Any questions? Uh, Brian, what's the, when we look at that development that's, that they're talking about, one, how many how many houses are we uh, projected? Are we, we're talking that, single family homes. That particular development is uh, currently uh, 18 homes is what was preliminarily mm -hmm. laid out for that. And uh, I understand that the property that's just to the north that was annexed into the city in 2009 and is now under development as Pine Meadows that the developers of that property are talking about uh, moving down to this property as well. Okay. Uh, do we know we have an estimated or anticipated time that they're looking to do that? Um, not really no. that sure. Okay. Great. Any other questions or comments? Mr. Mayor, I move we adopt ordinance number 1405, an ordinance accepting the results of the November 4th, 2014 election, proclaiming annexation into the city of Canby, Oregon, of 4.62 acres, including 4.47 acres of real property, described as tax lot 2600 of tax map 3-1E-27C, and 0.15 acres adjacent to North Pine Street right-of-way and amending the zoning from Rural Residential Farm Forest, RRFF5, to Low Density Residential R1 and setting the boundaries of the property to be included within the city limits. Second. Great. 
Motion made by Councilor Hensley and seconded by Councilor Ryder to approve ordinance number 1405, an ordinance accepting the results of November 4th, 2014 election, proclaiming annexation into the city of Canby, Oregon of 4.62 acres, including 4.47 acres of real property, described as tax lot 2600 of tax map 3-1E-27 C and 0.15 acres adjacent to North Pine Street right-of-way and amending the zoning from rural residential farm forest RRFF5 to low density <laughs> residential R1 and setting the boundaries of the uh, property be to be included within the city limits all those in favor aye aye, aye. aye. And all those opposed carries six zero Okay, the next item we have is Ordinance 1406. This is proclaiming annexation of 32.1 acres, including 31.6 acres of real property, described as tax lot, lots 400, 500, 600, 700, and 800 of Section 3, T4S, R1E, WM, Assessor Tax Map 4-1E-03, and 0.5 acres of adjacent Southeast 13th Avenue right-of-way and amending the zoning from County Exclusive Farm Use, EFU, to City Low Density Residential R1 for tax lot 700 and 800 and Medium Density Residential R1.5 for tax lot 400, 500, and 600 as setting the boundaries of the property to be included within the city limits. So again, on this particular one, uh, this property is on Southeast 13th Avenue on the north side. And as in the previous one, it, not only the private property, but the half of the adjacent <coughs> right of way is being annexed. And this property had five different property owners. And it also has two different zoning districts. And so two of the tax lots that are on the west side of the property are the low density R1 zoning and then the medium density R1.5 zoning is on the other three lots that are further to the east. And uh, due to the fact that our department currently has a volunteer uh, GIS person, she has worked on that map and has jumped the gun and changed our maps yesterday uh, so it reflects this coming into the city. And so we now have our, our maps updated so we can soon print those out. Uh, and the next step in the process will be sending these ordinances, that, uh, should you adopt them both, uh, to the Secretary of State's office. Uh, and they circulate them through various offices at the state, and then they'll come back to the county. Great. Questions or comments for Mr. Brown? No? All right. Mr. Mayor, move for ordinance number 1406, an ordinance accepting the results of November 4th, 2014 election, proclaiming annexation into the city of Canby, Oregon, 32.1 acres, including 31.6 acres of real property described as tax lots 400, 500, 600, 700, and 800 of section 3 T4S R1E WM, assessor tax map 4-1E-03 and 0.5 acres of adjacent Southeast 13th Avenue right of way and amending the zoning from county exclusive farm use EFU to city low density residential R1 for tax lot 700 and 800 and medium density residential R1.5 for tax lot 400, 500 and 600 and setting the boundaries of the property to be included within the city limits. Second. Well done, sir. Thank I'm you sorry, for taking that? that one. I second. <laughs> well, the first one was long-winded enough. <laughs> uh, motion has been made by Council President Dale and seconded by Councilor Hensley. To approve ordinance number 1406, an ordinance accepting the results of November 4th, 2014 election, proclaiming annexation into the city of Canby, Oregon, 32.1 acres, including 31.6 acres of real property described as tax lots 400, 500, 600, 700, and 800 of Section 3, T4S, R1E, WM, Assessor Tax Map 4, dash 1E-03 and 0 0.5 acres of adjacent Southeast 13th Avenue right-of-way and amending the zoning from County Exclusive Farm Use, EFU, to City Low Density Residential, R1, for tax lots 700 and 800, and Medium Density Residential, R1.5, for tax lot 400, 500, and 600, 
and setting the boundaries of the property to be included within the city limits. Fantastic. Any, any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? That passes 6 0. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. Thanks, Brian. Okay, the next item we have is Ordinance 1407. This is before you for second reading. This is an ordinance authorizing the mayor and city administrator to execute a contract with, with McLaren <coughs> Sons Inc. for the wastewater treatment facility improvements project and declaring an emergency. Uh, this is just the second reading. You heard, heard the discussion last week as for some long needed improvements uh, in the wastewater treatment facility. Right. Mm -hmm. Motion, please. Mr. Mayor, I move for Ordinance 1407, an ordinance authorizing the mayor and the city administrator to execute a contract with McClure and Sons, Inc. for the wastewater treatment facility improvement project and declaring an emergency. Second. Great. The motion has been made by uh, Councilor Co uh, Rocha, second by Councilor Coleman, to approve Ordinance number 1407, an ordinance authorizing the mayor and city administrator to execute a contract with McClure and Sons, Inc. for the Wastewater Treatment Facility Improvements Project and declaring an emergency. All those in favor? No. Nope. Uh, we'll we'll oh, sorry. I even had that here as a roll call vote. Sorry, Kim. <coughs> Councilor Rocha? Aye. Councilor Hensley? Aye. Councilor Parker? Or, excuse me, Councilor Coleman? Aye. Councilor Dale? Aye. Councilor Parker? Yes. Councilor Ryder? Yes. Great. That passed Dale six zero. <laughs> Okay, the next item we have is Ordinance 1409. This is authorizing a contract with Power Chrysler Jeep Dodge of Newport, Oregon, Safety Vehicle Systems of Salem, Oregon, Dell of America, Ro Motorola Solutions of America, Hot Rod DreamWorks of Canby, Oregon, and Ford Motor Credit Corporation for the lease purchase of two 2015 Dodge Chargers with police equipment packages for the Canby Police Department and declaring an emergency. Uh, Chief Smith, uh addressed you to present this information at your last council meeting. Uh, he answered the question that one of you had relative to the use of SUVs versus mm -hmm. these vehicles by indicating that he thinks they have enough SUVs on, on uh, um, in their fleet already and that they were comfortable and confident that this, this would serve their needs. Yeah, it's pretty, uh, pretty standard replacement yeah. time for yeah, two very, other cars. Very yeah. straightforward. Great. Mr. Mayor, I move we adopt ordinance number 1409, an ordinance authorizing the mayor and city administrator to execute a contract with Power Chrysler Jeep Dodge of Newport, Oregon, Safety Vehicle Systems of Salem, Oregon, Dell of America, Motorola, Motorola Solutions of America, Hot Rod DreamWorks of Camby, Oregon, and Ford Motor Credit Corporation for the lease purchase of two 2015 Dodge Chargers with police equipment packages for the Camby Police Department and declaring an emergency. Second. Thank you, sir. Motion made by Councilor Hensley and seconded by Councilor Coleman to approve ordinance number 1409, an ordinance authorizing the mayor and city administrator to execute a contract with Power Chrysler Jeep Dodge of Newport, Oregon, Safety Vehicle Systems of Salem, Oregon, Dell of America, Motorola Solutions of America, Hot Rod DreamWorks of Canby, Oregon, and Ford Motor Credit Corporation for the lease purchase of two 2015 Dodge Chargers with police equipment packages for the Canby Police Department and declaring an emergency roll call vote. Councilor Rocha? Yes. Councilor Hensley? Aye. Councilor Coleman? Aye. Councilor Dale? Aye. Councilor Parker? Yes. Councilor Ryder? Yes. That's a 6 0. Thank you all. Appreciate that. And such lengthy ordinances and resolutions this evening. Yeah, Joe, can you shorten those up, please? Thank you. <laughs> really get a choice on a couple of those. <laughs> Uh, new business is uh, for this evening is the cancellation of the December 17th meeting with City Council and then we're pushing into the holidays and fun festivities and Kim has informed me that the there's nothing pressing on the agenda. We took care of that the last couple of meetings so we can meet if you guys want. I'll put it in your guys' lap. We're okay. So I'm, I'm I think seeing... the world's safer when we're yes. <laughs> yes. I think that's true. <laughs> Less is better. Less right. is less. Less, less is, is more. Sounds like yeah. Less we... is more when government's concerned. <laughs> I will do everything that needs to be done to cancel Fine. that meeting. Thank I'm you, sure Kim. You will do that five <laughs> minutes after we leave. Yeah, it'll be out before it's we even so get out of our good. car. And you already have been canceled already, right? Yes, there is no URA meeting Correct. next week. Correct. Uh, moving into city administrator business and staff reports. Uh, 
thank you. First, I want to, uh, as has been previously indicated, uh, the uh, RFP for the architect for our new library civic center project is on the street today. As of today, we posted it to the city website. I want to uh, recognize and compliment Amanda Zyber for the work that she did in getting this out in very quick order. It, it went through our construction manager and legal twice. And, and back again, and so we're confident this is a good document, but uh, the timeline was, was tight, and yet we, uh, she managed to, uh, to pull it off. Um, it actually will be posted in the Daily, Daily Journal of Commerce this Friday after tomorrow. Um, we have a mandatory pre-proposal conference at 2 p.m. in City Hall Council Chambers on December 11th. Um, and the RFPs are due, and I will be sitting in City Hall at 2 p.m. on December 29th to collect the many, many proposals that we hope that we receive. Um, Thursday, January 8th, uh, we have tentatively scheduled for a team review of the proposals. Um, and then Friday, January 9th, uh, to notify firms of their status on January 15th, um, we're uh, tentatively scheduling the interviews for those finalists. Um, and then uh, turning right back around on uh, January 21st, which is a Wednesday evening, um, on the uh, uh, URA in session, and uh, we will be presenting to you the firm recommendation. Um, and what we will be asking for is, is to approve the recommendation, the recommended firm, and authorize us to enter into negotiations because it will not include a price component. And uh, then we're proposing that we come back on February 4th with an architect contract that will include all of the pricing components associated with, uh, with the project. There's a piece in the middle of this that's, that's really critical, and, and that is the timing of the uh, the hearing process necessary to uh, to make a final for the the uh, agency to make a final determination relative to the use of the um, the CMGC construction manager general contractor form of uh, proceeding or using a design bid build form of of uh, uh, proceeding with the the process and so it will undoubtedly hit you either on the uh, January 21st or February 4th meeting uh, as it's kind of critical and integral to pricing the, uh, the architect services. Um, a design bid build requires 100% drawings where uh, CMGC uh, process required doesn't have the same level of requirements because the contractor's involved in the development of, um, as we proceed with the uh, um, the process. A recommendation, as we've indicated to you, uh, is going to fall on the, on the, um, the construction manager general contractor form, which means that we'll be back again early in February and, and into March uh, uh, as we begin the uh, selection process for a contractor if, in fact, you, you approve the CMGC uh, process of proceeding with the construction. Um, I would uh, like to remind anybody that wasn't on at the beginning of the session that Friends of the Library are doing their their uh, um, Christmas home tour. Uh, I have my ticket here, and this is what it looks like. Uh, and I would encourage uh, everybody to get out and, and get it. It goes to the uh, uh, proceeds go to a very worthy cause, Friends of the Library. Um, all of those proceeds are spent in the library and to improve services within the library. Um, I did do a Canby utility tour. I want to thank Bob for uh, for doing such a good job of, of getting the tour set up, and uh, his the staff of the library were just excuse me Canby utility tour. I'm still stuck on my uh, staff of the utility were just went out of their way to. To outline the uh, functioning of uh, Canby Utility and how um, the interrelationship exists between the city and the utility, and, uh, um, and it was very helpful and uh, very thoughtful presentation. So I really appreciate uh, for the time and effort that uh, went into that. Um, as I had, uh, I, I want to also because he's still here publicly. Uh, 
apologize to Mallory and the Chamber of Commerce for missing the luncheon yesterday. I had a, uh, a business appointment that I had made two weeks earlier, not knowing that I was missing the event of the season uh, for the Chamber of Commerce. And so my sincerest apology, it won't happen again, Mallory. Uh, and. Uh, and I understand it was a wonderful, wonderful event. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, and then.